the topic of the conference is uh, Cradle to Cradle in the Built Environment. And um, we uh, who have been uh, arranging the conference are from the Constructing Architect program. But I will tell you a little bit about how uh, and what we are doing. Um, we are representing uh, the Sustainability Task Force. Um, we have three focus areas in the education of uh, constructing architects. And uh, these uh, three focus areas are shown up here. That's sustainability, communication and management, industrialization. Um, and today uh, we are represented from uh, the sustainability task force. We usually, uh, or we work in this task force uh, with a ranging uh, conference and usually we have uh, one conference each task force uh, during a semester. So that uh, ends up in two conferences uh, during a year. Um, the task force are not only working with conferences, we are also working with the education. So we try to implement um, learning goals within the topic that we actually are working with. Um, so what you see down here is actually some of uh, the academic uh, uh, subjects that we actually have in, in the education. So we try to uh, put up some learning goals uh, from these three focus areas uh, in the education. That's one of the things we also do. We are also working with a web platform uh, which uh, should be a, a platform or will end up being a platform where we share all the knowledge that we, we collect both at the conferences and uh, also by development projects and um, of course also within the education. So the intention is that this platform should be accessed from everyone, uh, that means external partners uh, lectures and students. So this could be um, uh, or will be a platform where you can go in and find your information on these focus areas. It's not final yet, but you who actually uh, uh, assigned for this conference today uh, would have uh, actually accessed the platform to, to get uh, um, uh, to, to buy the tickets for, for this conference today. Um, we also work with development in these task force, uh, and I can mention uh, within sustainability, um, we have uh, an IDP project, Integrative Design Processes, uh, which is a collaboration with the Michigan University, where we will try and develop a guideline for how to do integrated design, uh, both for uh, offices, but definitely also for students and teachers uh, here in the school and other schools. Um, we have several other projects and collaborations with other universities um, um, within sustainability, but also the other task forces. I will not come into that. But we also have a, a huge project, um, uh, which is um, the Via Energy Park, which Pierre will come into uh, as the first speaker today. So you'll get much more details about that later on. Um, I think I'll just have to mention we're also working with uh, implementing LCA system uh, within the education because it's, it's, it's also um, important when we talk cradle to cradle to figure out how to analyze these materials we're working with. That was a little bit about what we're doing as a task force here in the school. So you have a picture of what we will try to put together on this web platform in the future. So the other thing is why did we choose Cradle to Cradle today as a topic? Well, um, I could find a million good reasons because I think it's quite an interesting concept and principles. But maybe one of the most important things right now, because of economical situation, is uh, that you actually um, have quite a lot of focus on the economy when you work with uh, cradle to cradle. 
Um, there's just been released a report uh, from a quite uh, well-respected uh, uh, company, McKinsey and Company, uh, a management consulting firm, um, where they have uh, made a report on, on how the financial situation looks when we look at materials and also other things, but that's my main focus here. So I'll just like to, to read the statement uh, they did in, in this report. Uh, and it's, whilst major strides have been made in improving resources efficiency and exploring new forms of energy, less thought has been given to systematically designing out material leakage and disposal. So we're using a lot of time, we at least know that quite a lot in Denmark that the building regulation is getting tighter and tighter when it comes to energy, but the focus has maybe not been so much on, on materials. So that will probably be something we need to focus on in the future. And the next sentence, How e however, any system based on consumption rather than the restorative restorative use of non-renewable resources entails significant losses of value and negative effects all along the material chain. So one thing you could say from this is that we have the sun, we have the energy, that's the renewable energy is there, but if we keep reusing our resources, we have no resources left, but the sun will keep on shining, right? So we have a focus there we haven't been uh, looking at for quite a long time and I think uh, the report shows that, that this is definitely something we need to focus on from now on. Um, this uh, diagram is, is from the report and it shows uh, the increase in prices on resources and as you can see on, on the diagram it's, it's, it's quite drastic increasing and that's of course uh, uh, due to the lack of uh, resources. Um, one thing I like to add into this is that, that um, throughout the evolution industrial economy um, have been working with a linear model of resources. You could say it's, it's the take, make, depose we just take the resources, use them and depose them. So that's a linear uh, uh, economical trend. Um, the companies harvest and extract materials, use them, produce them, and then the, it gets to the consumer and in the end um, it doesn't serve any purpose any longer. And that's, that's of course a problem when we don't have uh, um, extended amount of resources. I like to mention that in the report it actually states that 65 billion ton of raw material entered the economical system in 2010 and this figure is expected to be 82 billion in 2020. So it's really increasing our use of resources. But the interesting a thing that they mention in this report is that if we try to focus on circular economy, we can make a swift in this uh, tendency. A circular economy is an industrial system that is regenerative uh, uh, in the intentions by its design. So it's designed for regeneration, regenerative uh, process later on and it uses uh, renewable energy, eliminates toxic and chemicals, uh, impair reuse, aims for elimination of waste. So this is very much uh, uh, the cradle to cradle uh, intentions also. So I believe it's, a, it's a, a report that actually backs up on the cradle to cradle principles in many ways. The, I'll just have to mention, if, if you don't know, but the blue circles are indicating a technical system or the biological, uh, and the green one, the biological system. I will not go into the principles um, since we have a lot of competent people here today 
who knows a lot about cradle to cradle and how to implement this in our design and buildings. So I'll just uh, go through them if, if you don't know them just as they are stated. And that is uh, the first one, waste equals food. Everything is a nutrient for something else. We need to keep the resources going in a system. We have to use the solar, uh, current solar income. We need to use renewable energies, yes. And we have to celebrate diversity. That could be biodiversity, it could be cultural diversity and innovation diversity. But I'll instead um, go on to the first speaker, uh, which is uh, uh, Pierre, but uh, for, I think I'll just go show you the program. There is a few changes in the program, so I perhaps should mention that. Um, we were supposed to have Benton Milton from uh, uh, presenting uh, Sustainia today, uh, um, representing Monday morning, but uh, that was not possible to do, and the two um, uh, in charge of Monday morning project were actually not available. I think they were in Rio and out of reach. Uh, so, um, Pierre will instead uh, today tell a little bit about uh, the, the platform, um, or not the platform, the virtual um, uh, creation of sustainability. Um, and he will also uh, sh show and uh, tell you a little bit about uh, VS Project, uh, the Energy House, uh, uh, in Energy Park in, in this presentation. When it comes to just a little practical information uh, for the presentations, uh, uh, if you could ask the questions after the presentation, it will be the best way to go because then we can control the time a little bit. So there will be a presentation and then I will and Andri will come around with a microphone so write down your questions and we'll take them after the presentations. And uh, there's a little um, at the presentation after the coffee break, uh, we will extend it uh, with 15 minutes. So it will last 15 minutes more. So that would be the delay in the program, hopefully. But maybe we'll catch up on other times for that. So I'd like to welcome Pierre Kassensen and, and to do his presentation on uh, Via Energy Park and the Sustainia uh, project. Hello everyone. Uh, first of all, I have to say that I'm a very poor excuse for Bente Milton and uh, Laura Storm from uh, Monday morning. They are two very, first of all, beautiful ladies and they are some powerful ladies uh, who are very capable of talking about uh, this project Sustainia, which I have the opportunity in, uh, as a substitute for those to uh, present our local efforts for this uh, project Sustainia. Just for a, a small quick poll, how many of you uh, know about the, the project Sustainia? Quite a few, uh, and quite a few uh, doesn't. Um, I'm fortunate that uh, most of my presentation will be some videos just to lighten up the, the environment. And uh, after that, you will have some excellent uh, speakers uh, dealing with the more specific uh, subjects of the cradle to cradle. Sustainia is a very exciting project where uh, it is born by the, the uh, magazine Monday Morning and the director Eric Rasmussen who invented the vision that he would collect and uh, connect a lot of universities, private companies and all experts in a vision of uh, a sustainable society and a sustainable world. Uh, and in connection to that, they've got the idea that instead of, because there are a lot of platforms for collaboration about uh, sustainability, cradle to cradle, and all these issues, 
in connection to this vision, they got an idea to create a virtual uh, uh, world also, which in one-to-one -one could create the atmosphere of a sustainable society. And uh, all the, uh, the web pages are there, and they Monday morning, the project Sustainia, Sustainia was launched at a climate meeting in Geneva, uh, March 7th, and they've got some pretty cool protectors for this project. They've got connections with Arnold Schwarzenegger and uh, our uh, commissioner, EU commissioner, Conny Hedegaard, and also uh, the former minister, uh, Brohan Grundland. And uh, they are kind of protectors for this new vision of creating a collaboration about a, a, a sustainable society and a sustainable world. I've collected a few videos. Most of these videos, or more or less all of the videos, <coughs> can be shown at uh, YouTube and also at uh, this sustainia.me. And uh, this is the, uh, the web page for Sustainia, and they've got an award. They have a plan, and you can submit uh, solutions, sustainable solutions, for uh, what they up until now call Sustainia 100. And uh, by fortune and uh, uh, lucky planning, we have the, the possibility to uh, submit, and actually we have submitted our own Via Energy Park for this uh, Sustainia 100. And just to show uh, shortly the atmosphere about the meeting in Geneva, I've collected just a glimpse of uh, videos I will show you uh, just shortly. <coughs> I also want to say thank you very much to Eric Rasmussen. Where's Eric? Uh, he's right over there. Yeah, I mean, this man is a genius. I love this guy. He came up with the, uh, with the, uh, uh, a Sustainia Prize. And it's one of those brilliant ideas. You know, that you hear when, 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 you, when you lead an organization like this, you have thousands of different ideas coming your way. But when I heard that Sustainia Prize that Eric came up with, I thought that that was a brilliant idea. And there will be a whole presentation that he's going to make, a power presentation, later on. And I just want you to know that I am a huge admirer of yours. I think the work that you have done has been extraordinary the last few years. As a matter of fact, we have learned a lot from you, so we could do great work in California. So let's give a big, big hand to Eric Rasmussen for his great leadership with renewables and sustainability. I personally feel as committed to this as I was committed to uh, our, uh, I should say, fitness uh, crusade uh, that we led for the last 40 years. When I said that one day there will be enough gymnasiums or more gymnasiums than their supermarkets or their grocery stores in the world. Well, I will uh, <coughs> be so rude to uh, stop Arnold Schwarzenegger because this video can be uh, uh, watched also if you enter the uh, sustainia.me. But uh, the one who should have been giving the presentation for uh, Sustainia is Laura Storm. She's uh, a director for this project Sustainia, and she's the one who are allowed to present Sustainia in the proper way because the expectations are very high. And um, the Monday morning crew, they only allow uh, number one Monday morning employees to present uh, the project. Unfortunately, as Heidi said, uh, Laura is uh, in Rio and Benta Milton, she's not. Uh, she's uh, involved in this project as the movie part and the virtual part. Uh, but it should only be one from Monday morning, and unfortunately they were not capable of doing it. Uh, I will just give you a short uh, presentation from uh, Laura, uh, because she's the one who uh, really should have been here. <clears throat> Thank you all of you. Um, 
I hope it's true what they say, that you save the best for last. Um, I will tell you about Sustainia and uh, why we have started this initiative. Um, I'm starting out uh, with a very beautiful quote saying, if you want to build a ship, don't drum up people to collect wood and don't assign them tasks and work, but rather teach them to long for, for the endless immensity of the sea. This pretty much sums up why we, it's so important that we use pictures and dreams and something desirable to strive for when we communicate about these issues. And that is what Sustainia is all about. Sustainia is a vision for the world we could make possible if we implemented the technologies, the ideas, the solutions already out there. It's a new approach to communicating about sustainability in a visual, visual tangible manner that people can actually relate to. I bet that there's a lot of people who have no clue about what it means to live in a low carbon future. Does it sound that exciting? No, not really, right? So that is why we have decided to create Sustainia. We communicate about Sustainia as if it was a, a destination you could actually visit. So we, need, we believe that we need to focus on creating a desirable, yet realistic and concrete vision of what a su sustainable society really means. Something that creates change and not distance. So who is behind Sustainia? The concept of Sustainia was created by 20 global companies and organizations, and they all believed the need for a new approach. They all agreed that we cannot afford to lose, lose speed on this important matter. So what they wanted, some of them is present here, DNV and Realdenia, was a vision of the world their solutions could create if we actually worked together on this. Not a sectoral-based vision, or a vision only communicating one technology, but a shared vision. So, how will we actually do this? We will build Sustainia focusing on three key pillars. We will focus on identifying the solutions behind Sustainia. We will focus on actually building the model and building the narrative around how should we communicate about Sustainia. And the last and, and really important component is how do we engage the change makers. And the change makers is not only the ones sitting here, but of course civil society. So the pillar one is all about identifying the successful solutions already out there. We call it the Sustainia 100. We start out this year with, se with selecting the very best 100 solutions that will lead us to Sustainia. Those 100 solutions will be announced at the Rio Plus 20 by Schwarzenegger and the rest of our panel, which I will come back to in a second. Later this year, we will announce the very best solution, the Sustainia Award. And that is what Schwarzenegger was telling us all about earlier today. The Pillar 2 is the Guide to Sustainia, the book that I have right here. This is the first narrative and the first edition of the model of Sustainia. It describes how our city could look like, how our home could look like, how our transportation and energy system could look like, but it does it in a very clear and tangible manner so that even my grandma can understand what a sustainable future is all about. The last component is our virtual construction site. This is Sustainia in virtual reality. This is to allow civil society to have a platform they can actually access. So all it takes is for them to have an internet access point and they could actually start visiting Sustainia and help us build Sustainia in virtual reality. We have already now started the construction phase. Here you can see a, a bit of a glimpse of Sustainia. Um, and here my avatar, Laura Storm, is visiting Sustainia and, um, and overlooking the construction site. So really, it is absolutely key that we engage civil society when building Sustainia. Um, so, so Sustainia is not only um, a vision in a, in a book, 
we are actually we've actually started the process of building Sustainia with the help of the research that has already been carried out, with the help of the people that are already developing the solutions, and with the help and the power of the civil society. The next step for us will be to further develop Sustainia with our partners. This is a process that we have just started. It's an innovation and communication platform, and we need the assistance of all of you to help further develop this platform. We will, as I said, present um, the Sustainia 100 at the Rio Plus 20, and this will be done by the Sustainia Award Committee. And this is headed by Arnold Schwarzenegger, but he's, jo he's joined by some very outstanding sustainability leaders. Go Harlem Brundtland, who was the mother of defining what sustainability was all about, writing our common future, who led to the first real meeting in 1992. Then we have Dr. Pachawi, who is the chair of the IPCC, um, who was partly winning the 2007 Nobel Prize. And then we have Mrs. Connie Hedegaard, the European Commissioner on Energy and Climate Change, she will be speaking tonight with uh, Mr. Arnold Schwarzenegger. So the four of them will announce the Sustainia 100 at the Rio Plus 20. Then, of course, we will constantly focus on developing this platform. And we hope by speak, speaking to you today that you will contact us and we can help build Sustainia together and make this a successful model for how we address and communicate a successful, sustainable future. So to summarize, Sustainia is all about creating a clear vision about a sustainable future focusing on concrete action. It's the essence of leadership, but taken on all levels. So thank you so much, and I hope you will join us in our efforts. So thank you. I, I will also be so rude to uh, interrupt even Laura Storm, because uh, you are all welcome to uh, join the web page and through all the links, you can see all these clips anyway. I will just show you, because I've only been given half an hour, uh, I will only show you two more uh, clips of uh, visualization of uh, what we will do with this Sustainia project. As um, shown at the webpage, uh, they have something called Sustainia 100, which is uh, 100 sound and solid sustainable projects which can be introduced into this uh, virtual world. And uh, fortunately, we've got uh, a cooperation between, we have uh, a cooperation with, in, in our own uh, VIA University <coughs> with uh, Danish Technology Institute and a company born or raised for a, a, a specific cradle to cradle and sustainable project, namely a, a building concept, which is, uh, has the potential of being a great uh, export concept uh, also for, for China and in other worlds. But uh, in, uh, uh, in our own backyard, we have uh, what we call a Via Energy Park, which is, with, which, which uh, is supposed to be our uh, research spot. And uh, the first project from this World Flex Homes will be uh, built in uh, VIA, in our own backyard, and it will work as a development center. And it's also a cooperation with um, um, the Danish uh, Technology Institute. And, uh, Based on this Sustainia 100 and the submission, there was a deadline uh, here the 20th. Uh, we made a visualization also of uh, the VIA Energy Park I would like to show you. It's done by uh, two former students, Vlad, and, uh, who's from Romania, and uh, Charmaine, who's uh, from Australia. And they made the first visualization for this uh, Sustainia 100 uh, submission. And if you would allow me, I would like to show this uh, visualization from VIA Energy Park. As humans, sustainability is a long-term responsible maintenance of resources. 
Cities are one of the largest contributors to climate change, emitting over 70% of greenhouse gas emissions and consuming two-thirds of the world's energy. In Europe, the building sector is responsible for a massive 40% of energy consumption. If we continue down this path of environmental destruction, we are destined for an unsightly future. In the future, buildings should be seen as producers of energy, not consumers. Denmark is striving for a 75% reduction of energy consumption by the year 2020. New buildings in the EU will have to consume nearly zero energy and the energy used within the building will be to a very large extent from renewable sources. In order to achieve such demands to improve and embrace renewable energy, BA University College, in collaboration with many partners, has proposed an energy park. Via Energy Park will be placed at Via School of Technology and Business in Horsens and will be a living laboratory for industrialised energy, efficient sustainable building and renewable energy sources. Via Energy Park is a part of the School of Technology and Business's new research and development profile within energy and building. The park will function as both a demonstration field for students and as a new innovation platform where Via experts can collaborate with students. It will also provide a place for external research institutions and private partners who in cooperation will create new profession oriented knowledge to strengthen both the profile of VIA students and Danish companies. VIA University College Energy Park contains a variety of clean energy producing elements such as solar cells and wind turbines for the production of electricity, vertical ground source heating boreholes and solar collectors for heating and hot water production, tank thermal energy storage for the storage of energy and rainwater harvesting system to collect and store water for the flushing of toilets and the maintenance of the green roof. Worldplex Homes Container House is a flexible modular building system that will be produced in Denmark and shipped to China. Its aim is to produce more energy than it consumes as well as utilising the energy producing elements within the VIA University College Energy Park. Solar cells convert light into electricity. Generally, one can say the more sunlight, the more electricity. However, as the sun heats the solar cells, the small crystals can get lazy and their efficiency drops. At VIA Energy Park, we conduct experiments with cooling solar cells with the circulating brine from shallow geothermal borehole. The wind turbine is a device that converts kinetic energy from the wind into mechanical energy that is used to produce electricity. The small wind turbines are equipped with data logging equipment and will be tested for a long period of time to analyse the power production. The wind turbines will be used for mechanical and electrical studies in connection with energy specialisation at VIA University College. VIA Ecolab was built in 2006 as a part of an elective environmental course. The building was constructed using CO2 neutral materials and produces energy from the roof built-in PVC units. Today the building works as a centre for measuring of energy production from different elements within the energy park. The thermal solar heating plant converts solar radiation to be used in the production of domestic hot water and space heating. The plant is mounted with sensors and data logging equipment so that the operation can be analysed. The plan will be used for studies in connection with energy specialisation at VIA University College. Ground source heating has been used in Denmark for three decades. At VIA University College Energy Park, we are experimenting with 100 metre deep vertical borehole heat exchangers. This way the temperature is much more consistent than at surface level. An additional benefit is that the borehole allows for seasonal storage of surplus solar heat or waste heat from cooling. Beer Campus Horsens has a vibrant international study environment. There are 3,500 students of which about half are international. There are 18 different courses to choose from which provide a diverse atmosphere allowing students to work with people from different backgrounds, different countries and study programs. There are many facilities offered on campus Horsens, including a brand new sports hall, as well as many social lounge areas, a bookshop, library and cafeteria. 
DSR and Tudor Society are the student organisations on the campus and they arrange social activities such as parties and sporting events. Fair Campus Horsons also provides classroom teaching which allows students to freely ask questions and engage in discussions with both their teacher and fellow students. Uh, hopefully in a few months uh, time we will have the project you saw built it in uh, one to one uh, down at the end of uh, block G and we we are um, looking for we are looking forward to invite uh, uh, other institutions to collaboration also about the sustainable uh, issues in this respect and parallel to that we will build this World Flex Home, which is a part of our energy park. We will uh, cooperate with the Sustainia team and build it in a virtual world, which uh, I will show you because I'm running out of time. I have only one more trailer to show you. We will build it in a virtual uh, platform, which is supposed to be a a uh, collaboration place where universities, private companies um, and uh, all citizens really can cooperate about the uh, issue of sustainability. Not only buildings, but also buildings, <coughs> social issues, sustainability, all these. And the idea is to connect a lot of universities in a certain university campus in Sustainia, what they call the Sustainia a civilization. Actually, the virtual platform they've chosen is Second Life. And Second Life uh, has had a uh, kind of variable uh, life, uh, really, uh, in the past 10 years. But uh, a lot of people think that uh, the platform uh, chosen uh, as a virtual platform could be a reorganization, actually, of uh, Second Life as a virtual platform for showing collaboration. And fortunately also we have some experience with Second Life and uh, the, the idea is that in collaboration with the Sustainia team we will build a part of our energy park uh, in Sustainia. One last uh, trailer to show you how it could look like in uh, the virtual uh, platform. In 2012, partners from all walks of life have come together to build a sustainable future. We call it Sustainia. Sustainia is a realistic vision of the world in 2020 based on the best available know-how in science. It's a construction site for those who have the solutions, technology and ideas to build a sustainable tomorrow. In June 2012, you can also visit Sustainia in virtual reality. Until then, stay tuned at www dot sustainia dot me this might be a chance for you to get an avatar and uh, join the life of uh, second life and joining also the sustain sustainia society do i have one half a minute more heidi just half a minute all right I've just shown you a peek of uh, our own island and the, the beginning, the beginning of uh, modeling uh, this World Flex home in uh, Sustainia. This is the model we are starting in Sustainia. where you have uh, a, a player, a media player, where you can collaborate and meet people if they just have an avatar. And also 
you can walk around and uh, um, explore the model in one-to-one. -one. Thank you for listening and uh, have a continued good conference. <laughs>